Hello, welcome to the first episode of the new season of the Mindful Introvert podcast. I am your host, Joe, and I am going to be talking about imposter syndrome, as you might have heard in the last episode that is a trailer for this season. Uh, and as, as I've told you, I'm going to divide this series, this season really, in um, big, big umbrella topics. And today we are going to start exploring imposter syndrome and perfectionism. And we are really going to explore what is imposter syndrome we are going to talk about the potential signs that you might look for uh, to see if you have it and how it is really stopping you and really keeping you stuck, really keeping you playing small, um, really dimming your light. And this is this is no good. This is not living up to your full potential. And so we really want to uncover everything that uh, this might be um, holding you back, basically. And I'm also going to be talking about on how to release the pressure to perform because there is um, a big, big society uh, pressure to really perform, to really be adequate, to be um, belonging to a certain uh, group or to um, achieve certain things. And so I really want to explore this pressure to perform, whether it is at work or in your personal life. And we are going to learn some coping mechanisms to really start releasing this. And then at the end, I'm going to give you some actionable steps that you can take away for this week up until next week, where we are going to continue to explore this topic. But I really want to give you something that is practical, something that um, you can do every day for five minutes that is going to help you move uh, in the direction of a more confident self. So let's get started with this episode, shall we? Keep on listening. Hello, welcome to another episode of the Mindful Introvert Podcast. This podcast helps you to get inspiration to manifest a life in alignment with your true, confident and intuitive being. I'm Jo from MindfulIntrovert.com, an inner peace and abundance coach and my purpose here is really to help you slow down, look inwards and create a more peaceful life by learning to trust your intuition and exploring your spirituality at a soul level. Ready to be empowered? Let's get on with the episode. All right, imposter syndrome. So Wikipedia tells us that imposter syndrome is also known as imposter phenomenon or imposterism, and it is a psychological occurrence in which people doubt their skills, talents, or accomplishments and have a persistent internalized fear of being exposed as frauds. And uh, a lot of uh, people with imposter syndrome. So, okay, little disclaimer, as I was saying, uh, everyone experiences um, uh, imposter syndrome at any point in their life, okay? So everyone experiences to a certain degree. Potentially, I would say that narcissistic people and sociopaths um, wouldn't experience this, probably, uh, due to mental... Um, differences uh, of the mentally healthy people. Uh, but I would say that everyone experiences this at a certain point in their lives. And so what are the signs that uh, you might have it? So you might be feeling anxious. Uh, you might not um, uh, really uh, think that you deserve, imagine a promotion at work or something. You might think, oh, this was just a fluke or this was just good luck or people uh, really, you never really recognize that people value yourself for who you are, for the work that you do. Uh, it's always because, oh, they just want to be nice or it's never due to your own success, due to you, your own capabilities. Uh, it's always um, doing to do with uh, luck most of the times, or it's it's it was just a fluke. And so, this can really stop you. It can really bring you down. It can really create this fear of 
being authentic and it, it brings people pleasing as well because when you experience imposter syndrome you um, don't want to be found as a fraud you don't want to be exposed as a fraud even though deep down let me let me spoil this for you you're not a fraud you're way far from a fraud but you internally believe that you might be a fraud so you don't want a people finding out and so this brings you to people please a lot it brings you to accommodate for what other people uh, think or say about you or expect of you so that you you just keep them happy and you don't really have them understand that you're not supposed to be there or they've made a bad decision by promoting you or uh, whether it's like in, in relationships that maybe, oh, they don't deserve you, they should be with someone else, maybe uh, you self-sabotage because eventually they will find out that you're not as great as they think you are. And so all of this really can stop you um, in multiple areas of your life. And at work, this is something that really um, hinders your your progress because uh, when you're stressed, you have a cortisol hormone so high up in your system that it really clouds your judgment. And when you're clouding your judgment, you cannot think properly, obviously. So you're not performing to your best abilities. And this really makes you seem insecure, makes you seem not confident and makes you seem that you don't know what you're talking about. And that creates the cycle of people believing that you're not as good as you think you are, as, as they would have thought you were. And so it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Um, and this doesn't mean that you're not good. It, it really just means that you're internally creating a process in your brain that stresses you out and that clouds your judgment and then leads you to have and, and to produce results that are not up to standard or that sometimes you have such high expectations that those results will never be up to standard because <laughs> you cannot meet your own expectations. And there is a lot of judgment involved with imposter syndrome as well. A lot of um, internal uh, dialogue that is very judgmental, is very uh, bringing yourself down. That can come from coming from a... a um, a childhood where you were very criticized and not allowed to think for your for your own with your own mind, um, or it can come from different experiences growing up where you just uh, needed to protect yourself and and really needed to uh, have this perfectionism of of being the best or at least not being the worst because that's basically what perfectionism falls into as well. And so this imposter syndrome um, is, is really stopping you from showing people who you truly are and who, the beauty of who you are as a person. And uh, I can tell you that when I first started doing coaching, I would think that, oh, I need to have everything perfect. I need to really uh, ask the right questions and, and have a system that really works, uh, that is very organized and that is very professional and that is very formal. And the more I, I went on with coaching, I realized that by being relatable, being vulnerable and, and sharing personal experiences, obviously with the emphasis of uh, giving a moral of the story, uh, with my clients, it really helped creating a connection and it helped delivering the message. And so, um, and that helps me be more confident. And uh, if I would just stay in that idea, oh, I'm, 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 a, this is just a fluke. I don't know what I'm doing. And in all truth and honestly, in the beginning, I didn't quite know what I was doing because I was still brand new. And so that's why I needed to rely on papers that have the questions or uh, processes that have a certain structure to to deal with a coaching session. But nowadays, I just go with the flow. And this is another thing. When you're not sure, you grab on to the recipe too much. 
But when you know the recipe by heart or that at least you feel confident enough to do changes to the recipe, oh, you do some intuitive cooking and the food comes out amazing. So it's, it's a matter of being more open to be flexible when things come up that you're not used to or you're not sure and really embrace the idea um, that everyone experiences this. And even the most confident people have been in a certain point in their lives doubting themselves. And sometimes those confident people are just portraying to be confident as a matter of self-preservation of their own facade for not being discovered as quote-unquote flukes or frauds because that's that's their coping mechanism of putting up this um, mask of being extremely confident to hide the insecurities. But that's another thing. There is no shame in being vulnerable or at least there shouldn't be and um, just saying, you know what, I don't know but I'll find out. I'll help you with this. Um, it's it's never uh, stopping the energy there. It's always being open to help out, always being open to know better. And that's actually something that coming from um, my background, um, a science background, uh, and in Portugal, it, it, you're expected to know everything. And you come out of uni and you should know. You just should know. And when you when I started to work, I I felt that I needed to show that I knew, even though I didn't. <laughs> but when I came to this country, I came to, I'm living in the UK, they were so welcoming and they were so uh, okay with training me on the job that I just slowly started to release that pressure to be just knowing everything right off the bat. Um, and I think that's the key aspect is you being um, allowing yourself to not know and sit with it, sit with not knowing and being okay with it, accepting it and being kind to yourself enough to tell yourself, you know what, I don't know and that's okay. I don't know everything, but I can learn. And you can develop those skills. And sometimes it's also important to understand, do I really don't know or am I just playing myself down? Am I just um, dismissing the greatness that I've achieved in life or the amazing things that I do? Just to be humble, because that's another thing that sometimes happens is people... Um, need to associate the idea, the concept of being humble with um, not being confident and not being arrogant, right? But that's the thing. The confidence is not necessarily being arrogant. Being arrogant is just being arrogant. Um, it takes a certain level of confidence to be arrogant, but you don't need to be um, arrogant in order to be confident. You can remain humble and uh, you can really play out your best, best strengths and and share um, the great things that you've accomplished, even though if you don't want to share, at least share them to yourself in your mind and, and pat yourself in the back saying, you know what, I've been through all these things and I'm on the other side. I came out stronger. I learned, even though they might have seemed failures to other people and to myself at the po at that moment, I've, I've learned and I've evolved and developed from this and I've grown from this. And is you recognizing that, that that is truly the power of, of dealing with imposter syndrome because it never goes away. It's a default mechanism that your brain has to protect you. And in all honesty, is is very important that you have it because um, it pushes you to do better, yes. Sometimes there's a lot of pressure and expectations associated, but it also um, is a, a way to your brain to protect yourself from mediocrity. Mediocrity, is that the word? I don't know. Uh, because you were born to be great. You were born to do amazing things. And sometimes it's not impacting millions of people by being famous, but it's impacting 
your neighbor, is impacting your family, your loved ones, your friends. So it's impacting the community at a level that can be small, but makes a big, big difference in people's lives. So that's why you came here. And and for you to be um, keeping yourself from, uh, from really tuning into this strength is a waste, is truly a waste. And uh, imposter syndrome, you can learn to live with it. And that's, that leads me to really how to release this, this pressure to perform is really to understand if you need to perform, if you always need to put up a show, if you always need to show, um, as this perfect version of yourself with your life all put together, can't you just be vulnerable? Can't you just, obviously I'm not saying with the whole world, but find people that you trust enough to be yourself and, and really connect with them at a vulnerable level and sometimes help, uh, ask for help because people that that deal with imposter syndrome a lot, that leads to anxiety and panic attacks even, they tend to sometimes keep to themselves too much and not ask for help and think that they're alone experiencing that. So even at <clears throat> in their workplace, they think that they're the only ones struggling, <clears throat> excuse me, to understand the concept. When in fact, maybe your colleague might be struggling the same. And if you were to, to talk to them, you both could help each other um, finishing the report or whatever it is, you know, but just saying, you know, what I need, I need some help or I need to chat for a bit so I can get this off my mind. So is really to recognize, is this true? Is this a true, um, uh, danger that I need to, to be mindful of? Uh, is this really going to affect my life, um, to a degree that, I'm just allowing it to keep me stuck. Uh, and so that really leads me to the actionable steps. I want to keep this episode as short as possible. So we're not dwelling too much on, on the concepts and you can just have time to integrate them as we go. Um, but key aspects would be to really understand that imposter syndrome is this idea of being, of experiencing the fear of being found as a fraud, of really, um, think that, uh, you're not good enough. You're not worthy to have this promotion or to have this amazing relationship. And I can tell you, I was coaching a client that was telling me that they were, um, they had some, um, fear of speaking up to what they really like and do a talk, uh, like public speaking, because they were just, just this, felt this fear. And here I was coaching this person, telling them you need to really empower yourself and this and that and things that I'm telling you right now. But up until very recently, I have been dimming my own life and my light. And I was experiencing a lot of imposter syndrome thinking, how can I be coaching others and how can I be super inspired to talk to these other people about topics that I myself am struggling with. I am feeling like this creative block where I cannot be really myself because I'm feeling the shame and the fear of being seen as something more than I'm, that I am or that I think I am. And I've been just dimming my light and playing small. But today, learn from me. This is me really empowering myself and speaking my mind. Everyone struggles. I struggle. I have struggled quite a lot with imposter syndrome. That's why whenever it pops up in my mind, I recognize it and I challenge it. And that's really the actionable step that I want you to take is to recognize your thoughts you can even write them down. That's why journaling is a powerful, powerful tool for this. Uh, really understand what is your inner critic telling you? What, in what moments are you experiencing imposter syndrome? What are you telling yourself when you want, when you have an intuitive hit of saying, oh, I just want to do this. I want to do this talk or I want to uh, share this video on Instagram or whatever it might be. I want to write a book, whatever it might be. I want to start a family, 
what is stopping you from really um what are the thoughts that are stopping you from achieving those things basically write them down and then challenge them is this 100% truth what is the cost of me continuing to believe this and stopping myself from doing differently and how do i know if the scenario that that i play out because that's another thing with imposter syndrome we stop ourselves because we think that we know exactly what's going to happen if we actually have a different action and and do the things that we want to be doing but in all truth we do not know this is just our ego trying to protect us so ask yourself is this true is this 100% truth is this likely to happen And how do I know? I don't know. So I just need to go. Go with the fear and just try it out. So challenge your thoughts. Have this dialogue of um, uh, observing your thoughts and really having this conversation with yourself, challenging them. And I would say, ask a few friends and loved ones how they perceive you and how they perceive you and just have them really... uh, and tell you what they think of you. Don't ask for compliments. Don't ask for all things that you should improve. No. What is their image of you? What they, when they think of you, what do they think about? What are the characteristics that uh, they think when your name is involved? And you, and this can be a very um, active, uh, an activity that can create connection because then you can tell them what your what your perspe- perception of them is, and so that can create a different uh, a, a reframe of how people perceive you, and that can create the um, an image of sometimes I'm not saying who you truly are because you're much more than what people think of you. But if you have maybe five people saying the same characteristic, the same adjective when they are describing you, maybe, and if you don't believe that is true, maybe that is something to consider and something to maybe embrace and recognize in yourself. And then you know what? Be kind to yourself in the mirror. When you're um, brushing your teeth in the morning, you have like two minutes of looking at yourself in the mirror. And you can use those two minutes to give yourself affirmations that really play to your best strengths. You can say, oh, um, you're so amazing. Or even if you don't believe you're amazing initially, you can start with baby steps just recognizing, oh, you've made such a big effort. Look at what you've been through in life and look at how you're still standing here, getting up in the morning, brushing your teeth, taking care of yourself, brushing your hair, even putting on makeup if that's the case or washing your face and really loving yourself and going out and about of your day, just going to work, um, just building a life that you want to be living. And that is really um, very powerful when you have this conversation with yourself in the mirror in the morning and you are your best cheerleader. You're not there because most people just criticize themselves when they're looking in the mirror and you really need to start being your best cheerleader. You really need to think of yourself as if you're talking to your best friend and just hype them up, hype them up. Because if I had a friend that was always criticizing me like sometimes I am criticizing myself my god I wouldn't I would not call them friends anymore they would be almost my enemies so really think of yourself as your best friend and talk to the mirror as if you were hyping your best friend up so be kind to yourself and challenge your thoughts and really get an idea from a few friends and loved ones of their perception of you that uh, those are the actionable steps for this week and that is the concept of the imposter syndrome and how to deal with it really try these things out and and commit to explore your mind and explore your uh, thoughts your negative thoughts around um, this idea of not being good enough and uh, connect with me send me a message on instagram or here on your podcast 
rate and review the podcast as well. Um, follow because this season is fire. I'm telling you, you do not want to be missing this season. The rest of the episodes that we have, we have three more episodes talking about imposter syndrome, going into perfectionism and how to deal with all of this. So you definitely want to be sticking around for this. All right. I love you so much and I can't wait to see you on the next episode. Bye. If you are fully committed to your growth, I invite you to book a free inner peace assessment call with me where we create an action plan to manifest a life worth living with more inner peace and self-love. And for more inspiring content, follow me on Instagram at Coach Joanna Calado and subscribe to my YouTube channel at The Intuitive Being. I will leave everything in the show notes so that you do not miss a thing. I'll see you in the next episode. And until then, slow down and trust yourself. Bye.